So, okay, uh, as you guys are joining in, it looks like Elise has a poll question up as well. Uh, and so what is the question? Are you a current member of Deal Machine? Uh, okay, it looks like over half are, but it looks like we have some uh, that are not yet or on the fence. So I'm really excited we get the opportunity to answer your guys' questions tonight, um, and as well as share a, a great success story. So first of all, we're gonna get kicked off. We've got a special guest. Um, they're gonna share their REI background and experience. Aaron and Michaela, uh, thank you so much. Congratulations on your engagement. Not only are you business partners, but you just got engaged as I understand. That's right, David. <laughs> Pretty excited about it. That's really, when was it? When did you get engaged? Okay. <laughs> February uh, 27th. Okay. All right. Great. So yeah, 2020. Pretty recent. You have your wedding planned yet? Yeah, it'll be uh, April of next year. Okay, great. You got some time to plan. We needed it. <laughs> yeah. So as I understand as well, you guys have been doing real estate investing for about a, a year and a half. And 80% uh, of the deals that you've done so far have been with Deal Machine. You've got some cold callers. You're actually driving for dollars yourself and adding about 10,000 leads. And you're doing roughly five deals a month. Does that all sound right? That sounds about right, David. That's impressive. <laughs> did you just start doing that one and a half years ago? Or like, how did you get started? So that's a great question. Um, so yeah, we've been doing this probably for about a year and a half. Um, long story short, how I got into it is there, I was in the fire department. Um, I basically went through a, a custody battle. I'm not going to get too much into that, but I, I was going through a custody battle and, um, I had an attorney. I don't know how many people have had attorneys, but they get pretty expensive, uh, especially not on the firefighter pay that I was on, but I knew I needed it. Um, so I, I just sat back. I did what Robert Kiyosaki what says in his book, you know, that not that I can't, but how can I? So what I did is I, I started figuring out how can I make money and how can I pay for this attorney? Um, then I went back to, to that book. Uh, back in the Navy, I was in the Navy for about eight years. We used to pass around books that we would read. Um, and that was one of the books. Never took action back then, but I actually picked up that book once more, uh, read it. And then I found out, okay, how can I get into real estate, you know, with little to no money? Um, did some, uh, you know, search in and um, found a coaching course, found, uh, went into that uh, course. Actually, I did a lot of research. Uh, when I was off, I, I was off for about 48 hours. I went to her work and I said, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, it's this thing called wholesaling. I know I need a coach probably to show me a little more about it. And uh, she, it was about $5,000 at the time. And, and she said, I know you've done your research. Jump right in. I was like, here it goes. And just and remember, I had no money. I, I was trying to pay. I was Everything was going to my attorney. I was doing a lot of overtime. So anyways, I had a credit card, uh, put it on my credit card. I know a lot of people say, don't do that, but guess what? We made it 10, you know, made that back in uh, tenfold. Um, so anyway, so I put it on my credit card, got my first deal, um, two and a half months in, just went all out. Um, it's funny, Cody Hoffine uh, would say, you know, get, try to get your first deal like somebody took your child. And that was my story, <laughs> right? That's, that's how I felt. So anyways, we, anyways, long story short, uh, we did get custody. So I do have uh, my little girl with us. Um, she's with Nana right now, but anyways, um, so after that first, after that first deal, obviously it was a uh, dream come true. I was like, wow, I think we made about 19 K on that first deal. I said, how can we repeat this? The hardest part was the deal flow after that. How can, how can you keep consistently get these deals? It was hard enough to get that first one. I remember that first one too. And it was a, um, it was not fun at all. I had to go through an agent, all this other stuff. I double closed it. I was like, how is this? Uh, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. Well, anyways, it is a lot of work up to this day. Anyways, um, I did a couple more deals after that, but they were very just kind of hit there, here, there, right? Um, my first deal, my first big deal closed. As you guys know, Zach Booth, I, I hit him up. And he said, uh, why not quit his job? Why not quit your job? <laughs> um, anyways, I remember I was in the fire department. Um, we were, we made 55,000 off our first big deal. I, I just kept scrolling, um, you know, refresh on my, uh, bank account. As soon as it hit my account, I went in and I quit my job. <laughs> um, were you gonna say something, David? No, I just said, okay. 
<laughs> <laughs> so, um, but we were still in that, like, okay, how do we do this consistently? Anyways, I knew that there was a list out there that I had to find that no one else had. And what is that list? It's driving for dollars, right? Mm -hmm. It's creating and building that own, your own list. So I knew how to do that. And that's when I signed up for a Booth's course at that time. That was about last summer. And then we just started driving for dollars. And then it was deal. And then it was another deal. And within like a month, I got three deals. And uh, she saw she saw it and then she quit her job. <laughs> um, so that was pretty cool. She said, and she she'd keep bugging me. How can I help? How can I help? And uh, we and that's when I started taking off my hat and started giving a lot of positions to her. Um, but yeah, long story short, that's kind of that's kind of how it how it all started. Gotcha. And I see you've got a rhino back there, so you must have been a wholesaling ink student. <laughs> right. That was the first coach. That was the first uh, coaching program I went through. Awesome. And so you guys are adding ten thousand leads per month now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you driving together? Or are you driving separately to cover more ground? So Usually, uh, we were kind of splitting it. We were both trying to hit at least because uh, the goal was about twenty five hundred a week, and we would try to pick opposite days to go. And then it, um, as more leads were coming in, he got busier with dealing with the acquisition. So then I was just driving. So gotcha. I was trying to do that as much as I could at one time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it kind of came down to just me driving. And then if he went on an appointment, he'd pin while he was after the appointment. Yeah, got it. So um, do you guys have any uh, other tips for driving for dollars so much, right? You said you had done your first deal. The next challenge was deal flow and you've, you've seen to work your numbers backwards to so make sure you keep the deal flow adding 2,500 per week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like, do you have any, any driving for dollars tips? Uh, that well, helps you hit those numbers. You know, we do, David, obviously <laughs> I'm just holding back a little bit. Right. <laughs> Um, I could just, I could talk, we could sit here and talk all day about, um, you know, deal machine, driving for dollars, wholesaling. Um, and first things first, that's the only thing we do at this moment. I know that a lot of people that are probably doing a different other, other creative stuff, retail stuff. Uh, all we do is wholesale and then we take our retail leads and we give them to our, um, our retail, our uh, real estate agent. So anyway, so at that time, um, once we started that, his course, um, this, I knew I, need, I needed to get on Booth's course. Um, cause I knew that obviously that's where drive for dollars. He knew how to systematize it. So I took, I did that kind of created it and just ran with it and, uh, did obviously my, some of my own things on there. And uh, that's when we hired a driver, we had, a, had two drivers at the time. So we're getting about, I don't know, 500, 800, uh, pins a, uh, a week. Right. So, and obviously we wanted to up those things, um, up those numbers, but anyways, long story short, we realized that there was some inconsistencies in that. Um, obviously we could track them. I would, I remember, I, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard of like sweet process where we made videos. I made videos. I'm, I'm a big guy on systems. And that's something we can definitely talk about here tonight on how to keep those deals coming is, is if you have a good system and every aspect of your business, those deals are going to go run smoothly. But anyways, um, so we got a couple more deals and then, uh, we realized that hiring our own drivers at that time, again, we're actually revisiting that, but we needed more numbers because we would actually go and, um, go check those those houses that he pinned and realize that he would pin an ugly house but there are still about three other ugly houses that he did not pin and we're kind of like okay hey why don't you pin the rest of these yeah so that's kind of yeah so that's kind of when we uh decided to kind of put him off to off to those off to the side unfortunately he actually got into a car accident and um so he had to take he had to take a, uh, some time off and that's when I said, Hey, well, um, actually, you know, we're going to, we, we filled that position, right? <laughs> so anyway, so she took that over and she started pinning. Um, we, we hit a goal. We wanted to do a goal of a 2,500 a week. And that's when she took it over and while well, we were doing it at the time, but let's just, I'm just going to give her all the credit right now. because she does <laughs> go out and she's pinning, 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 pinning. And we're just, and if, if she can't hit it, sometimes I'll go out and help her. But, uh, when we get that list, we pull that list for the week, then we text blast them. Uh, we obviously cold call them with our cold call team, and then we'll send direct mail for a while. We were sending our direct mail to, uh, the people that we couldn't contact, but now we send it to everybody, but, okay. but, Got it. but even on pinning, um, obviously I use the, the tap to add mode because our, our idea was usually is, you know, if you're in a nicer neighborhood, yes, I'll only pin like the houses that are, that show a lot of distress, but if yeah. I'm in a neighborhood and it's like. 90% of it looks kind of 
run down, then I usually end up pinning the whole neighborhood. And the, the reasoning is because sometimes those people that are maybe in the nicer house don't want to be in that neighborhood. You know, so we kind of started, we would do singular really bad homes, but then also neighborhoods that we wanted to farm essentially. And um, I mean, there's times we've gotten deals where we, he goes to the appointment and he's like, are you sure you pin this one? It doesn't, it doesn't look that bad, but it got us in the door and it, and it started that conversation. Got it. Yeah. Somebody asked what you mean by pinning a house. So just to clarify, when you're driving for dollars, you, you can, uh, and you see one that looks run down, you can pin it in the app. The app will tell you all the information about the owner yeah. and you can follow up with them via marketing. Yeah. So that's a great background story of a lot that you've accomplished in a year and a half. And, uh, you know, I hear that it started out because of family for you, uh, right, in, in that custody battle. And mm -hmm. now it yeah. seems like it solved that problem, hopefully, and then uh, continues to, you know, bring your family uh, a lot of value and also the others that you guys are helping. So that's great. Mm -hmm. No, and hundred percent. The thing that wholesaling brought with to us was not just that, as you already, as I said before, I quit my job. My worked at the fire department, um, 72 hours on 48 hours off. Um, so I was gone primarily a lot of the time. And when I got custody of my little girl, uh, Michaela would actually watch her. And I didn't really feel that good. Um, obviously as a new father, having my new girlfriend kind of watch her and, and also her family helped in and stuff like that. Cause a lot of my family is up North and for anybody who doesn't know, we're in Southern California. Um, obviously a lot of people say it's competitive down here. Guess what? It is, but be better, right? <laughs> work hard. It's, it's anywhere you are. It is hard, but as long as you put the work and you, and you, you're consistent and you're obsessed with it and to your own success, don't worry about anybody else. Only worry about yourself. Um, so Anyways, I quit my job and he gave us that freedom. A lot of people talk, a lot of people talk a lot about, um, you know, don't work in your business, work on it, right? I'm sure we have all heard that. <clears throat> well, here, here's the thing. I like what Brent Daniels actually said. He said, you got to earn that right to work on your business, not in your business. I, I love that. And on top of that, I still do work in my business. I, I handle fully ac all the acquisitions still at this moment. But guess what? I have the freedom right now, right? I had the freedom to work for myself. I had the freedom to build that culture. And, um, and that's something we did here. We built cultures, we built core values. Uh, we have Monday, we have uh, morning meetings every day and we're able to create that. And we have that freedom to do, do such. So we're pretty excited of where we're at. That's amazing. So glad you guys have that freedom. And uh, it's, it's great that you quit your job as a firefighter. Thanks for protecting everyone out there. But um, it seems like you're providing uh, a lot of help to individuals in a different way now. Absolutely. So guys who are on the call, I've seen some questions roll in. Ask your questions in the chat and Elise is actually going to bring some of the best questions on and, and we're going to bring you on video live with your camera and your uh, mic. Um, so you can ask uh, Aaron and Michaela uh, any questions that you have. And it looks like we've got our first guest. Hey, Michael. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, my questions about lead generation and about cold calling. Just wondering um, what your setup is with that. Like you're using VAs and kind of how that process looks. Yeah, <laughs> you're all about the cold callers. Yes. Great, great, great question about that. I know I get a lot of people individually um, who message me about our cold call team because we do it a little different from what I guess the industry is right doing. Um, so when I first started, um, I hired two cold callers in Costa Rica um, and they were great. We actually got, I think, like two, two deals, I think, from from them. Well, anyways. I realized I, was, I wasn't too bad at acquisitions myself. I actually would cold call myself at the fire department um, before I quit. Um, I actually got the fire department <laughs> uh, Wi-Fi and I would cold call at the fire department. And so I became pretty good at cold calling. So what I wanted to do is obviously what we do in our fire department um, when I was in the service, right? We, only, we always train. I'm sure you know that too, right? Whatever you're doing, you're always training to get better. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create that culture of training and yeah. getting better. So what we do here is we don't hire out VAs. Actually, we do have three VAs, but they call, they call for cash buyers, but they actually call for sellers. We, uh, I have all my cold call team here. Um, if you go on my Instagram, I have kind of like uh, our setup. We have desk. Um, I create I create systems. They go through a 30-day probation 
where they have to read books. Um, we have to bring a certain amount of number of leads in. They have to go through certain amounts of training. They have to, um, you know, watch certain videos. And we obviously go over their calls together. We have, I have now a team lead, uh, co-call, and she trains them every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and also, guess what? I'm in the office. I get to hear that. And we're able to kind of get those like, you know, gold nuggets in and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, that's just the way I do it. Other people are very successful on hiring other co-callers in the Philippines and out, outside the country. But that's just the way we do it. Mike, are you, are you I love that there? idea of growing domestically. Yeah, I'm still here. There you go. You're free. You froze for a minute, but I see you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I li like that idea. I like that the idea of growing your own domestic uh, cold calling team. So um, I think both approaches work, but just. Aaron, I was curious, um, you said that you, you had people read books. What are the books that are required on your reading list? <laughs> well, great question. Um, I put them up here for this purpose. No, I'm just kidding. no they're actually up here. Uh, so I do already have a set of books. Um, I'm sure we all know The Rhinoceros Success. They, actually oh, yeah. have to read, they have to read this book first. Once they're done with that one, I'm sure we all know our main man, Steve Trang. He, uh, you have to write, read Active Listening, his book that he just came out with. So those are two easy ones. And then obviously all of our favorite is never split the difference. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah. So they, so they read those kind of sit this net, the rhinoceros success is to kind of get them motivated, um, you know, so they can charge through anything. It's a cheesy book, but I love it. And then um, obviously the other two sales books kind of gets them to know how to talk to the sellers, how to listen. And, you know, obviously what, what do they say, right? You're not, if you're telling, you're not selling, you got to learn how to listen and ask good questions. Mm-hmm. Michael, uh, sorry, you got cut off there at the end there because of a connection. Do you want to try to ask the last part of that, that last thing you were saying? Just curious about that. Um, yeah, um, it wasn't really a question. I just was pointing out that, you know, growing your own domestic cold calling teams. Um, I like that approach. Uh, I like both approaches. I think both can be successful, but pros and cons. No, 100%. Yeah. If, if, you're, if they had them outside the office and what I did with my Costa Rica callers, I would get them on a Zoom call every uh, every week and I would train them and we'd go over their calls and I would have them critique their own calls as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever, you, whatever, whichever way you do go, you just want, you gotta be consistent with it and make sure you train them, listen to them. Cause at the end of the day, it's your business. You know, you don't wanna just kind of let them go on their own. You wanna make sure that you're listening to their calls, going through it with them, working with them because it's your vision it's not always theirs and you got to work with them so they can see what your vision is to benefit you and the company. Mm -hmm. Now I had a question. Where did you find those cold callers? Did you say that? Yeah. It's a great question. Yeah. Uh, we just do a normal hire, right? We want somebody who is kind of local, not somebody who is super far away. To, to right. But I mean like indeed, are you posting on Facebook? Yeah. Indeed, Craigslist. Yep. And yeah. And uh, zip recruiter. And zip recruiter. Yeah. Got it. What, what's been your best result? Indeed. So we've been using Indeed, but our best, our, our team lead right now um, came from Craigslist, actually. Wow. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> we got really lucky with her. We're very grateful for her. <laughs> That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's a, it's a good uh, lesson that you should post it on uh, all three. Yeah, all, and, all and there's, a, there's a step process that we do, too. You know, when yeah. we post it out there, then we ask them certain questions. They're kind of just like, it's like the first step of filtering is if they answer those questions, then they move to the next step. You can't, I can't even tell you how many people, even today, my assistant got, I think she said like 10 people that applied and one person answered the questions. Got it. Yeah. If you can even answer good. the questions, you're not going to go to the next parts. <laughs> That's good to have those hoops to jump through at the very yeah. beginning. Oh. Michael, do you have any other questions? Um, I, I think that's it. Just okay. curious about the cold calling because I'm in that process myself of uh, starting to build up a team. Awesome. Well, I hope that was yeah, helpful. Let me, let me ask you this, Michael. Have you, uh, have you done all, I'm sure you already have, but have you done all the cold calling yourself and uh, perfected that system? Yeah. So for the past year, I've been in the trenches making all those calls. I've made thousands go. of calls. I've done deals. So I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a pro, but I have experience and I think I could teach someone nice. how to navigate Perfect. through those, through those waters and pull out some leads. There you go. 
Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Michael. I appreciate it. I hope it helps you in building a cold call team. It looks like we've got yes, uh, sir. Thank you. Guest up. You're welcome. Hey, Gordon. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, David? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Nice. Where are you calling uh, yeah, in from? Thanks for uh, Bay Area, California. Nice. Okay. I live, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I've been investing out of state uh, in Huntsville, Alabama for the past four years. And I was usually relying on wholesalers for the off market deals. But now, as things start heated up, right, I don't have any leverage, right? Like, uh, and I have in the past six months, I have had cases where the wholesaler just just back out of the deal because he got a better better number somewhere. And uh, so I thought maybe I should start looking at deals, finding better deal flows, right? So I was looking through the usual uh, finding list and kind of trying to do the mailing campaign just to kind of understand the process, right? Uh, so I wanted to know from you guys, right, Aaron, how, what are some what are some of the processes that you follow, right? Like getting from the list list to actually sending, and then what kind of systems you have in place to basically follow up and convert that into a deal, right? No, one one hundred percent. It sounds like you're you're trying to get into the acquisitions of things. Uh, the first thing, so if you want to get the list right, every list really works. But I would say. For us, like I said, Drive for Dollars is the best list because you will be developing that. So obviously Deal Machine, what I love, we love about Deal Machine is that they have definitely perfected that Drive for Dollars system. So I would say, you know, download your Deal Machine, go out. And I actually, I'm from the Bay Area as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, and so go out, look for ugly houses, pull that list. And again, their support team's awesome. And if anything happens, goes wrong, they're there to help you right away. So I'd pull that list. Um, and then there's right on that platform, right? They have they have the text messaging platform. They have the cult, They have the direct mail. So you could skip tracing. yeah, you got the skip tracing. You could do all that right from there. Obviously, and then you got other uh, regular uh, call systems, right? That are that are easily available. There's so many, right? Uh -huh. So what I would do is I would hit those sellers in every single direction that you can, right? I would text them. I would call them, and I would also send direct mail if you, if you can to maybe all the people that you can't reach, right? All those people didn't say no, or all even the people say yes, just all the people that you can't contact, pull that list. You can do that simply in Excel. She's great at it. Um, I obviously handed that off to her, <laughs> but hit them in every, every single direction. And even if you get a hot lead, don't be afraid to do a little door knocking. And that's something we do too. Gotcha. Uh, have that sense of urgency. So here's the challenge, right? Since I invest out of state, um, okay. Okay. Maybe this question might be uh, for David, right? Have you had these uh, set up where, like, how how do I like find someone local, right? Like, to basically, how does that work? Like, the 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 driver has the app, and basically, I track it. Like, how does that system work, right? Anybody can yeah add some more light yeah, on so that. Uh, the way you find somebody local to drive is you would post a job on Indeed specifically for Huntsville, Alabama, and then you would sort through your applicants. And there is a, I have like a hour long video or I have it just written down, however you prefer, but it's like, I very detailed outline how I hired the driver and, and hold them accountable. There you go. See. Uh, can you point that uh, link to me? Uh, that'll be great, man. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So Pam is going to do that. Um, Elise will help out. We've got, um, uh, like I said, the link to that video. I've got the job description and the hiring process. And you know, a key part of, I know that uh, Aaron, you said you had a driver that wasn't adding the right types of properties, right? Is that yeah, no, he, he yeah. did a good, like I said, we did do deals, um, yeah. but we wanted more pins. Yeah. Especially here in Southern California, as you guys know. Yeah, so I would say a key part to working with a driver that I have found is to schedule a weekly meeting so that at a certain, the same time every week, you guys are gonna meet, and then you, uh, you know, ask him how many properties he added, ask him how many hours he was to put in. I always have a minimum. You don't have to work 40, but you've got to work more than 20. Otherwise, it's not worth me meeting with you every week. You know what I mean? So that's like one guideline I set up front. And then I need to make sure they add at least 12 an hour because otherwise they're kind of wasting their time. They're in the wrong area or they are not adding enough like Aaron was saying. So that's like another benchmark that I have for them. 
And then uh, we spot check their deals on the spot every week. I never stopped doing that. And so yeah. basically, I don't know, I'm guessing because you're Zach Booth students, you don't add pictures, but my drivers add pictures. And um, if, you, if your drivers aren't adding pictures, you can at least look at the Google image that should automatically come up in deal machine just to make sure they're adding the right type of house. You know, if, if they've added a warehouse for say, like you could give them a feedback and say, Hey, this picture is a warehouse. I only want single family. And then they're like, Oh, okay. I won't do that again. And, and then hopefully they never do that again. But if they do, well then, then maybe you need to have a conversation about, you know, what's the problem here and uh, hopefully not, but does that make sense? Like, it, it's not like super complicated, but like just those few expectations and regular check-ins is, is what I have found that uh, is required to make it successful. Can I, can I uh, piggyback off that? Yeah, of course. So one thing that we do in our business um, is, like I said, we do Monday, hut. sorry, I keep saying Monday, morning huddles. Every morning we talk about what's going on in the business. Another thing that we do is um, we have a big whiteboard that has a lot of our KPIs on there. So one thing we are looking at is we are going to be hiring a driver again. So we're going to revisit that. Um, and what, it, what we want is for him to, and again, I don't, you can't do this probably virtually unless maybe you could do a Zoom call or something. But we do have an office. So we're going to have him, that driver, come in every morning. And we're going to talk about what's going on. Because we, we talk with the cold caller's assistant, what she's doing. And we have all their numbers on there. So obviously it's kind of like a check-in. It's going to that accountability. It's actually something good I read in my book that I, I'm reading right now. You have all your key before in indicators on the wall because then it keeps everybody accountable. It, it kind of, it's kind of like that, like, hey, well, you're not doing your job. And it also congratulates people when they are doing it. So, Thanks, guys. Really appreciate you answering that. Thanks a lot. Of course. I was curious, did you say you had a wholesaler that backed out of a deal on you when you were trying to buy a deal from them? So the the seller backed out on the wholesaler. Mm. And so because somebody like the competition is so high, right? He got it under contract uh, for a number that was really great. Uh, and just two days before the closing, uh, the wholesaler says, hey, the, the seller just backed out because he probably got a better deal somewhere. Oh. And yeah. Got it. Well, it doesn't look like you had control over that situation, but if it was under contract, that wholesaler should have enforced the contract. That's the whole point of the yeah. contract is that they can't back out. <laughs> so that's why I was wanting to I, dig into what you said there. Yeah. I So the wholesaler is like, if the seller is not, I mean, the, he could have enforced it, but that's, that's probably not the right way. Right. Like if, if he's not ready or if, if he's not willing to sell, right. Uh, he said he yeah. would rather let it go. And, well, it's uh, hard to yeah, know in the situation. It. Obviously, I don't know all the details. You didn't have control over it at that point. Yeah. So anyway, kind of a moot point. But I and was same thing. Like I have that. another offer. I've put in another offer. The wholesaler, right? Like he just. Uh, you can see that the the leverage is with him, right? Like you try to follow up with him. Hey, what about my offer and stuff like that, right? You just feel that it's not like an even. Uh, negotiate and play right like they have all the leverage in this case sure well thanks gordon thanks guys hope we yeah. answered your thanks, question David. about hiring drivers huntsville alabama i've been there there's like a nasa camp i think or some oh, type nice. of space space so i've been i've been there very nice place um so i actually have two really good questions from people but they unfortunately do not have a camera and cannot or, okay. or don't feel comfortable being a panelist. So um, I said I'd ask him for him, but I have one from Anna. She first asked about how, if you guys could explain how you work with a real estate agent. And then she has another question after that to kind of piggyback on that. For sure. Um, so we have different ways that we can work with an agent now. And hi, Anna, thanks so much for the question. Um, so there's a few things that we can do. Um, if you're talking about lead flow, so we obviously have leads that are more retail leads because, and that's something I do as an acquisitions guy, you always try to give that seller that push to where they should be going. And if at the end it's you, great. But a lot of times we will push people off. We'll do like kind of an agreement with, um, an agent or a good, pretty much a good friend of ours. And we'll say, and we'll kind of work a, a, an agreement out. So what we do with our agent, um, if he gets the listing, uh, we'll, and on his commission, we'll do, he'll get the 70%, we'll get 30. So it's just kind of like a, we call it mailbox money. Um, if you're talking about get deals from an agent, 
that's possible as well. Um, you could obviously build, we've done that. We've got, we built relationships with agents where they're like, hey, we have a fixer upper. Um, would you like to put an offer in for it? We have, and guess what? We, we got the deal. Uh, we were able to assign it because here in California, and as far as I know, anywhere else, you could assign most contracts. Don't, don't, get too, don't get too worried and wrapped up about that, those kind of things. Obviously talk to your attorney um, and take action. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And that actually kind of goes into, um, I love that you said that you can get deals from them, but she wanted to piggyback. Is this recommended for beginners who lack understanding of real estate docs and legal matters? And you just said, don't get tied up in that. <laughs> for sure. And it doesn't have to be a complicated, um, a, a complicated thing. I know on the retail side, as far as like with agents, it tends to seem complicated, but it, it really doesn't need to be purchasing a property and then and assigning it off is not as complicated as people make it. So um, just the biggest thing is just take action. Just just do it. Just and keep moving forward. You're going to make mistakes and you learn from the mistakes. But you've got to keep going. If you don't go, then you're you're never going to figure it out. Absolutely. And don't worry. We were in the same uh, analysis paralysis as anybody else was. Thank you. Uh, and then I am bringing someone right now. So we're going to have Brandon on. Cool. So um, I had two questions for really. Um, the first one had to do with cold calling. It's like, I know for myself that if I get a phone call from a number I don't recognize, I have a Google screener and I just put it to that. And then I, most of the time it gets marked as spam. So how do you get around that sort of thing? And the second question was more like, let's say that you do find a seller that's interested, like what is the process from that point on to closing the deal? Those are two uh, great questions. Um, so what we do is we use a uh, service uh, for our phone numbers and we actually um, change those out twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, so she'll actually be doing, she actually does that. So it doesn't pop up a spam and we could use that number a lot more. Uh, and, and then on the call back, it goes, we have it set up to go direct to voicemail yeah. just to screen it a little bit, but yeah. And there are services out there that could, could help you out with those kind of things. Now, the next question is my expertise and what, what we all love is that seller says, yes, I would like to sell my house as is right. Um, you know, obviously you want to go through that pre-qualification, right? Uh, and you want to pre-qualify them hard. The harder you uh, qualify, the fat, the easier the deal is. And if you haven't read any good sales books, you know, definitely di dive into some good sales books. There's some great ones out there. Um, that's how I, when I was at the fire department, as you guys know, as firefighters, we're not working constantly. We're, we would literally be in our rooms and uh, or just kind of hanging out at the firehouse, waiting for a call. And what I did it during all that time is I would just read. I'd read sales books. And then when you get, and so I don't know if, I don't know how far you're into, uh, you know, just like those books I just recommended, you know, never split the difference. I definitely check that one out and learn those, those four pillars, right? I even tell my cold callers all the time, you know, I don't, here's the thing. They, they go through the four pillars of motivation. I do the same thing when they put a, when they put a lead into my CRM, I go through the same four pillars. And if I feel like they hit one or two of those, I'm trying to get on that appointment. What are the four, four pillars? Great question. Uh, so obviously the four pillars are condition. Um, so that's something I always ask, you know, it's just kind of what's that general condition, right? And on that, on that, again, you're, you're kind of just getting to start to open and talk. Sorry, David. <laughs> and then driver. <laughs> uh, he's like ready. He's like, <laughs> I, I go all day on this. So condition, driver, timeline, and obviously price is our last one. Now, as we all know, <laughs> is there, David, share us. Share. Wait, share what? Did, did you have another one? No, I just can't hold my, I can't, I can't hold four fingers up with my pinky down. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to hold it down because I started and, <laughs> and out of those pillars, again, sometimes you'll hear, oh, well, my property needs work. Oh, that's a good pillar, right? What's their driver? Oh, I want to, you know, you could always say, wow, it sounds like a great property. Why do you consider selling? Because let's say that it's a divorce, uh, somebody died maybe, or I need money to get to pay for the taxes, or I'm moving out of state, right? Timeline, oh, you know, because a lot of people in this business think that everybody wants to sell fast, sell fast, right? I hear that a lot. 
not every, that, that's a whole like pre foreclosure ideology, right? Yeah. Not everybody wants to. We have an, we have a good 55 er in escrow right now. That's a 60 day escrow because he needs time. So anyways, but timeline's always good too. You know, sometimes they do need that 30 day or 15 day, right? So that's a good pillar. And then obviously price. Sometimes you could see that the ARV I don't know, is uh, 500,000 or, you know, here in California, right? 500,000. <laughs> and then they're like, well, I want 300,000. Well, I'm gone. I'm, I'm, okay. on, I'm already at that house 20 minutes later, right? So that's, those are some things that you could check out. And not necessarily do they always need all four. I think our kind of rule of thumb is, if you can, if they have at least two of those pillars, go. And also follow up, yeah. follow up. Now, the reason why we were able to do that five plus deals a month is because the follow up is where it's at. I have a team now that takes care of everything else. And I'm now just focused on my CRM. As soon as I hop on the office, I'm focused on my CRM and I'm just following up with my leads daily. I'm going on appointments. I have goals. I have benchmarks. Yes, I am going to hire that out um, here soon, but that's where I'm at right now. Hope, hope I can answer your question if you have any more. <laughs> uh, no, I did. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brandon. Hope that helps. Thanks for joining us with the video. And Mike, love to see you and hear you guys. Um, so uh, Elise is going to bring on, I think, some more. We've got about 20 minutes left of the Q&A. So if you haven't asked your question, now is the time. Yeah, ask your questions. We are open book. All right. I. Uh... Oh. Maybe he's coming on. Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> Mike. Hello. Hey, Mike. You can't see me, can you? <laughs> no, but we can hear you. Oh, darn it. Uh, that's weird. Oh, well. Uh, Aaron, I'm a firefighter too. I hit you up on uh, Facebook Messenger. I was going to buy you a beer, but you didn't <laughs> take up up my request. So, <laughs> no, I'm a firefighter in Dana Point, California, which is Beautiful. a gorgeous spot to be a firefighter, as Aaron, you probably know. Uh, and I don't really want to quit my job because uh, <laughs> I love it, as Aaron probably can attest to. Mm -hmm. Well, my question to you guys is, do you have any other lead source you use other than uh, driving for dollars? Uh, for the most part, like I said, to get those consistent leads and the, sorry, the consistent deals is definitely driving for dollars. Uh, we sometimes will pull this from title or whatever, but nothing too much. We, don't, we just kind of play around, but it's always been the key source was uh, driving for dollars. And yeah, it's, it's what's got us to where we're at today. Yeah. And when you focus on there is. <laughs> when when one of the one of the pillars of motivation is condition you know when you're driving for mm -hmm. dollars you're finding that first pillar so when you find a distressed property you've hit pillar one you know now you just got to get them on the phone and find out what the next piece of motivation is and so mm -hmm. it's you know the the conversion rate as far as how many pins to how many uh respond we have it all in our kpi spreadsheets you know it's a lot um I say so you don't have to pin as many to get as many responses if that makes sense like on a list you've got to pull a lot of numbers exactly to get the same amount of responses or the same amount of leads with driving for dollars it's it's a lot smaller 100 percent. i see and that's why I'm, I'm so thankful for david being an innovator on this whole deal machine obviously we've all heard the the stories of writing down the addresses <laughs> And uh, I was not in that industry, but and I just kind of hopped in and said, hell, look, deal machine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I have another question, if you don't mind. Um, when you negotiate your deals, do you meet with every single seller or do you do it? Uh, do you negotiate your deals over the phone? That is a great, great question. I know a lot of people are talking about in this industry right now. Uh, you know, I, I close my deals over the phone because, you know, I don't want to waste my time driving. Right. But here's the thing. Um, I'm able to get those contracts locked up because I'm able to go to belly to belly with them. I'm able to put a face to that person over the phone. I'm able to build that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I always beat out my competition because of that. Um, even if I have, and you know, here in California, we got to drive an hour. I do. <laughs> I drive an hour to these appointments, but guess what? That's a good time for me to listen to my podcast. Um, you know, listen to videos or whatever. And I, that's one of the time I get to learn a lot. Um, but no, that just like I said previously to the other individual, 
um, your follow-up, right? Not everybody's at, not everybody's ready to sign. You know what I mean? But sometimes, and my follow-ups are very simple. Hey, this is Aaron. Um, you know, or let's say John. Hey, hey, John, this is Aaron. I uh, just just wanted to give you a call. You know, just a follow-up. Blah blah blah. You know, just a hello. It doesn't have. I I spent too much time when I was in the when I first started trying to have these like thirty to hour minute conversations, and it just led to nothing. You just, that's why I'm saying you always stick to uh, those those pillars, and you can talk about that. You get sidetracked, but you want to have those longer conversations when you're actually at the house. Yeah. And I would say only going on the appointment once they're ready, once it's closer to them. If they say, oh, well, check out with me in four months, it necessarily, it may not be worth meeting with them right away, but you just, like he said, you follow up. And when they, you can tell that they're like, they're close, they're ready to sign that contract, go, go and meet them face to face. And is that time at that point uh, when you're talking with the seller in person, face to face, is that when you're taking photographs of the property and that sort of thing, or or do you even do that? No, hundred percent. I definitely do that. Um, so what? So obviously you got the you could, you could call it the perfect seller appointment. Now <laughs> I've done so much different types of trainings um, as well with this kind of stuff. So usually my process is I get to the house, you know, I wipe my feet, we'll walk around the property, and we'll just kind of start building that rapport, start loosening it up, right? Um, and I might even ask like, Hey, can I take a few pictures? And obviously they're like, yeah, no worries. And I always say, Hey, if there's anything you don't want me to take a picture, just let me know. So we'll take a few pictures as we're walking around the property. Um, we'll sit down. We'll usually like in a kitchen or dining room and we'll just start talking. But here, and always remember this, ask questions, ask good questions, be a listener and ask those questions, have them kind of sell for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, so why, why do you want to sell this property? Why don't you listen with an agent? Why don't you just, you know, ask tough questions, you know, start because what, what do they say? Go into the negative. Obviously, they'll come and get you. Who? Uh, somebody said this. I think it was Cody Hoffman. Uh, <laughs> just like a little puppy, right? If you're, if you're chasing that little puppy, he's going to run away. But if you start running away, that little puppy's going to chase you. It's the same way with sellers. Um, and it, like I said, these books are just just how to talk to people. And uh, and then after at the end, I always ask, you know, so, I mean, when do you want to move forward? Let's say we start negotiating. If they're starting to sign that agreement, I say, hey, why do you look over that agreement? Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to just do a quick walkthrough video. I usually get my video and then we kind of set up again. It's all different other process, but anyways, that's how we usually go. That's all I got for now, guys. Um, hey, thanks so much, I'm Mike. Gonna go to the fire, I'm going to go to the fire station tomorrow and do some studying. <laughs> oh, you, hey, hey, there you go. Yeah. Hit me up if you have any questions. Stay safe. I will. Thanks, Aaron. See you guys. See you, Mike. <laughs> So when you have a shift at the fire department, when you had a shift at the fire department, yeah. you're there for 72 hours and then now, you, home, you sleep well, there every night. Oh, well, yeah, it was 48. Yeah, it was 48. Eat, 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 sorry, that was, I said that reverse. I, I've been, I haven't been working there for a year. But anyways, <laughs> East, Depart yeah. East Department will have different schedules. Um, mine was 48 on, 72 off. Some people have better schedules. Some people have worse schedules. But yeah, he was there for a full 48 hours. Yeah, yeah, and the, and, I, and Mike was right. You know, it was, it was a great job, but at the same time, I wanted to have that freedom to be with my daughter full time. Yeah, especially when they forced him, <laughs> forced him to work. <laughs> yeah, if we had like a fire or something, I'd have to stay an extra day or whatever. Anyways, that was yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Sean, how are you doing? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. How you guys doing? Also awesome, Sean. <laughs> All right. How you guys doing? Thanks for coming on. Um, quick question. Um, how do you guys build your, your buyer list? And also, how do you nurture that list so that when you guys do lock up that contract, um, you have some, some uh, qualified buyers ready to, to move on that? Beautiful question, Sean. So I'll take that. <laughs> so I handled all the dispositions. Um, he does acquisitions. I handle the dispositions. So um, buyers, we've done a few different things. We've obviously go on the Facebook groups, ask if anybody's interested. Um, we have three, yeah, we have three right now, VA callers in the Philippines. Uh, we purchased a list of people that have purchased, bought homes cash over the last like year or two, I think is what it was. And then we just have them call them. Hey, are you still investing in the area? Would you like to be added to our list? We send off market properties to you. And, um, so then we add them into our CRM and then, when we blast our deals, like I, I feel all the calls and the biggest thing is just making them feel like they are heard. So when they call me, it's not just like, you're not just a number to me. Like obviously on our board, I'm like, Ooh, here, here's more numbers, <laughs> but you know, it's talking to them and saying, Hey, we're going to work with you. It's, um, it's really just talking to them, to be honest. Um, not just treating them like 
because in, in the end, yes, they are making you money, but they're also making money too. So you want to make it a good deal for them as well. And always being responsive, always answering your phone. That's the biggest thing that I try to do is when we blast out a deal, I answer every single call. And I can't tell you how many times people have said, you're the first person to answer your call. Everybody else lets it go to voicemail. Mm-hmm. And, and, or calling them right back, texting them. Hey, sorry, let me call, give you a call right back. So, and then even the whole process through, I touch base with them, you know, every day, if necessary, every other day, but we touch base with our sellers too. So it's always just working with everybody and say, Hey, we're all in this together. Not just, Hey, thanks for my money. Bye. <laughs> yeah. So one, so one thing that I think we're trying to say too, is that we're also not, as you're building that list is we want to develop those relationships, right? Um, Cause as you already know, and you, if you, if you've done a few deals yourself, you know, when you blast out a deal, you're going to get a lot of calls. Now, obviously I did hand that off to her. Now she's able to develop those relationships. Uh, but back to obviously um, building that buyer's list. Like you said, we do have uh, three call- callers calling. We do find other buyers through other situations, but we like to vet our buyers to see if they want. And we have thousands of buyers in our area. So our deals do, you, do usually go pretty quick. Sean, do you have any other questions on, on that? That's kind, that's kind of been like oh, our proven stuff. I learned I, back in the day when I first started, I had a, like we talked about this earlier in Wholesale Inc. You know, they call Craigslist people, um, you know, property managers, just any way you can find different types of buyers. Um, but yeah. There's some, and obviously people trade lists and stuff like that. And I tried to do that one in the beginning, but now I've kind of summed it up where I like to vet everybody first to see if they actually are looking for properties. Mm-hmm. Cause there's no, so many awesome. agents out there, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it guys. Thanks Sean. Absolutely. Hey, it looks like we've got time for one or two more questions. So uh, we're going to do a lightning round and uh, at least you got somebody queued up. Yeah, I don't know. Zoom's lagging, but Ray is there. He is okay. Fantastic. I, I took lessons from a guy named Rich Guzman. I've never seen that last name before. Ray, do you play the drums? <laughs> David, I also love your furniture there. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. It's actually uh, a tree. You know, <laughs> love it. They're not comfortable, but they look <laughs> they look very cool. <laughs> They're just for looks. Well, yeah, that's all I got. So if you want to sit down, <laughs> it's also functional. All right, Ray, can you hear us? You look like how, you're how about Ray. Jesus? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, all right. You're the first one to talk. <laughs> Go ahead, Jesus. Uh, hey, I just had a quick question. So, Aaron, when you get your um, driving for dollars list, um, and let's say that you cold call them and they don't answer, do you send out a postcard right after, or how does that process look like? Do you keep calling them, or do you just send out mail right after? Hundred um, percent. And that's a great question. So we call, like I said, we try to call our list two times. It was three, but we think we've just figured out that two is a little bit better. That that third time, just you're not getting a hold of anybody. Um, and then, yeah, we'll pull that list. You could actually filter contact and not contacted. Mm-hmm. And so we will take the contacted off the Excel sheet and then we'll mail the rest. All right. Thanks, man. Oh, and Ray's here. All right. I'm back. I, I was, uh, I'm driving around <laughs> and I was, <laughs> don't have good reception i found the spot um so thank you i want to say thank you uh thank you guys for all your knowledge and all the nuggets you're sharing with us um i'm out here in california uh southern california and i'm new to this so i haven't had my first deal i downloaded deal machine so far i like it because you could take the pictures but my problem having is um when i'm doing my arv is coming up with the price my wholesale price, the price that I want to make, because everybody I follow or all the or all the people on that do give out the information, they're all East Coast. So they're yeah. doing like 10, 10 K. And, you know, homes out here are like just around my neighborhood. It's like 500. Yeah. Like my house, if I, 
if I was to sell my house right now, I could sell it for 520. Um, so it's completely different on the East Coast. And I was stationed out there. So it's a different way of life out here. So <laughs> how do you guys come up, come up with your prize? Yeah, Ray, um, message me on the side. Um, we have a cal I have a calculator that I had in my head. She created it on Excel. And so we'll send that to you. Um, it's pretty simple and straightforward for us. It works. Yeah. Um, it's funny. And it's, it works for the, for, for our price homes. Yeah. And it's so funny that, uh, people will, will say it doesn't, but it works for us. Uh, yeah. yeah well, uh, David. Oh, well, I was just going to step in and say, if you're in the Midwest here and it's like a hundred thousand dollar house and you're seeing a wholesale fee of 5,000 and, and let's say your deal is a million dollars. I think just, if you're looking for a baseline, take the same percentage for your wholesale fee. True. Yeah. You know, I, it's it, obviously not perfect. There's more nuance than that, but you're going to get a 50 grand for wholesale fee instead of five grand. And that's, yeah, that's actually very true. Because <laughs> it, it's going to take you a lot more to get that deal, right? Your prices are higher. You're going to have to spend more money. You're going to have to add more driving for dollars properties. You're going to have to send more mail because your list is bigger. So you're right. going to spend more to get that deal in the first place. Make sure your wholesale fee is proportionately larger as well. Right. Yeah. On, right. Yeah. On our calculator, like I said, it'll take off about six to seven percent for like holding costs, retail costs. Um, then it'll take off a uh, buyer's profit, the, your desired wholesale fee, repairs per the square foot, and then you got your MAO. And then we'll also have your anchor on there. So we'll shoot that over to you. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. And where where can I look for that in the messages on here on Zoom or? I'll oh, just my private email. message. Uh, message me on uh, Instagram. Instagram or Facebook at Aaron Gaunt. We'll have a slide okay. up at the end, Ray, where it'll show their uh, their handles for those. Nice, nice. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That's really generous of you to share that calculator. Yeah, like I said, it was in the head, and I'd always have to like you know write it out and do it on the calculator, and I was like, hey, can you put this together for me? Uh -huh. <laughs> I was, I was the math and science person. So Excel is second nature. <laughs> That's right. Jose, how are you doing? Doing well. I'm actually, uh, that, the, the ARV was, uh, was the same question that I actually had earlier. Okay. Only because I'm, I am on the East Coast and I actually became a real estate agent just to get access <laughs> to all the tools yeah. to get a proper honest, ARV. Yeah. Because in, in all honesty, uh, it's, it's uh, really tough out here. And, um, the stuff that I'm seeing from other wholesalers, it, there's just no profit to be made. So I'm no, trying that's to true. make sure that it makes sense. Cause you know, in the last six months, it's been nuts. Oh yeah. What I've seen is, and I, uh, um, there's a lot of players willing to pay full price. And so wholesalers are now raising their prices. They're paying full price. I mean, that's why like a small investor like me, I can't buy from wholesalers anymore. And, and that's nothing against wholesalers. If you're wholesaling, you should you should charge as much as you can, you know, but um, that's, that's what I've seen. And not only in the last six months, but over the last like four or five years, since I've been in the industry, I, I've just noticed that there's more people that are willing to pay full price. Cause they're, they're just trying to get like 500 homes as fast yeah. as possible. And yeah. I'm not playing the appreciation game. I need it to cash flow, you know, but the wholesalers are selling to the people who are paying the most, which they should. So I agree. I've seen the same trend. Well, and, and I, so I actually have my license as well. I'm not an active agent. Obviously I'm more focused on the business, but that's what we use it. I mean, I use it so I can get onto MLS, mm -hmm. but if for somebody that's not, I have heard, um, if you make a good relationship with another agent, they can help get you like, a, I think it's like a temporary access kind of thing to get that information. But either way, I would always say network with some agents make them friends and they'll help they, they they'll they'll be there to help you everybody wants to network yes and no and then yes north, and no everybody, <laughs> Some making, people, yes. everybody in the northeast is making so much money like oh you're not real well i'm not i'm not looking to teach you <laughs> that's and that's how it is uh, no, 100 and that's actually i would like to add something here david um i love that you that you brought that on and i don't know how many people are watching but here's the thing if you want to start if you want to ask those high players that are doing multiple deals, I'm not, I don't want to consider us any high players, but we definitely are farther than we were as a beginner. Right. 
But if you ever want to ask somebody, try to add value first and then ask your question. Mm -hmm. Too many people out here are asking their questions, but don't want to obviously give any value. People that obviously are doing deals, they would at least want to see you add value and at least try attempt to add value. And guess what? They're going to be able to, they're going to want to answer your questions and help you out. Mm -hmm. So both of both of these last two questions were asking for ARV, but it actually seemed like Ray was really asking how much should I charge my wholesale fee, mm -hmm. right? And then and then uh, Jose was asking ARV. I think he actually meant like, what is the comp? What is this worth in perfect condition? Is that is that correct? Is that your understanding as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think the, so uh, so your calculator requires that they know the arv first right and then it's then it spits out the rest yeah and so what do you guys do to get the comps right what do you what do you get to get the after repair value which is what is the property worth in perfect condition well that's actually just what she said so she has access right to the mls so i get to use the mls well i'm not an agent don't want to be one but so I'm always on the MLS running comps. Do but um, so basically how we what we go, we try to go for like a say a safe ARV. So the range you usually want to look for is um, so say the, the property you're looking at is like a three bedroom, two bath. OK, so the range I would put in would be two to three bedrooms, one to two baths. So it was look lower um, your square footage. You do plus or minus plus and minus 15 percent. So you get a range of your square footage and then you try to stay within the same neighborhood. Um, you don't want to cross main streets, get out of a different neighborhood because those houses aren't going to be similar to your subject property and aren't really going to count because you got to look in the, at the eyes of an appraiser when that home goes on market when it's fixed up. They're not going to look at stuff that's two miles out or in a different neighborhood. So you got you want to try to stay around your house and similar properties, similar to like properties. Um, right. And the MLS is key to that because you can do some of that on Zillow, but the MLS gives you the pictures so you can see yeah. all the properties and what they actually look like inside, which is super important. When and six months out, homes. six month range. Okay. Well, I like what you just yeah. said there, David, um, you know, not just the pictures, but also the descriptions of yes. what the agent puts, right? Was it a probate, right? That's obviously gonna bring down the, the price. Mm. Or for example, yeah. we have one that in the neighborhood, um, I think the average sale of those homes was like, say 600,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was like 850. Which yeah. way out of, but when you look at the description of what happened, they put in about 200,000 worth of upgrades into the house. So you have to watch descriptions. You got to look at the pictures. And then that's kind of how you can arrive at what your after all fixed up, looking great on market price would be. Yes. Comps tool. <laughs> yeah. No, we do it. There's a comp tool in Deal Machine. Erica was just asking that. Um, so, I would just say the, the one thing that you don't have sometimes is uh, the, the pictures, right? So um, to me, to me I'm, I'm not an agent, right? But I also have just always run comps myself with Zillow uh, for my deals. Sometimes it, does, it has the pictures, so you can, you can do it. Um, but yeah, anyway, well, that's all I had to say about that. Pictures to me tell like a lot of the story. True, very true. So we're at eight o'clock. Thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, everybody give a lot of love in the chat uh, to Aaron and Michaela for spending the evening with us, helping answer your questions. For those of you, you guys wanted access to the calculator, I think the best, what I'm hearing from, from these guys is uh, Aaron's Instagram is the best way. Is that true? To get the either calculator? One. Yeah, either one. Either, either one, uh, if you guys want access to their calculator which was very generous. Thank you guys for sharing that. No, thank you for having us. But don't go away. We're gonna do a demo deal machine uh, right after this for 30 minutes. Um, you guys are welcome to hang out or we understand you have other obligations this evening too. So um, yeah, thank you once again. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Elise, uh, oh, you've got another slide. Look at that. <laughs> Well, we're not saying thank goodbye you guys. yet. What's that? I was gonna say, I just wanted to say thank you to Aaron and Michaela so much because you guys, um, 
you check out, we'll have Aaron's um, success call too, the first time around on there. That was a great deal. I know someone asked if we, you could talk about a deal start to finish and that's one right there that's recorded, but also do feel free to reach out to them. But thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, really appreciate you guys and so thankful that you're in our family. Yeah, thanks. Congrats for building a business the size that you have. It's not easy. Yeah. And very few people say congrats, I noticed along my journey. So I just wanted to recognize like how uh, amazing that is and the hard work that you guys put in and, uh, you know, the, the risk in quitting your job to make it a reality. And, uh, I hope that comes true for many on the call who haven't done their first deal yet and, uh, would wish the same for them. So congrats. No, thank, thank you so you. much, Deal Machine. We also represent you guys in our office. Um, you know, we have all your swag and we, <laughs> we love showing you guys off. Oh man, thank you so much. We'll, we'll always we have a picture of Hadley in her hat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, please tag us in that. I want to put it on <laughs> our Instagram it so bad. <laughs> Text it to me. I will. <laughs> but yes, go go be with your daughter if, if you need to, because I know y'all are busy and so time is precious. Let's go bring up Deal Machine. Deal Machine. Yes, yeah, so exciting. So one thing I noticed, uh, We've done some demos on here before and we kind of run through the whole main menu, but I wanted to try a different style of demo today, if that's okay with you. Are Love you okay in that? So I was thinking um, the, the homepage, the homepage says like, these are the two plans. And then we have like several other key features listed below that that come with every plan. So I thought what would be great is to start with driving for dollars. And then we'll start with the list builder after that. So we can say, hey, these are the two ways you can generate leads. And then from there, we can talk about the real estate data, how you do your research, how you do your filtering. We can talk about skip tracing to get other data. And then we can talk about the, the mail campaigns, which would be like the final thing we would cover. Because uh, I just feel like that might flow better. You want to give it a hey, shot? Let's do it. Lead okay. the way. Well, now I'm stuck in a test account. Uh, just give me a second. <laughs> I don't know how to get out. I'd love to hear as David's doing that. What is a nugget that you guys, I mean, I know there were a bunch, but what's a nugget you guys took away from tonight? Um, and of course, we're always here to answer your deal machine questions as well. We have the lovely Pam on here. Um, so uh, yeah, I just love to hear what you guys thought. Um, love to see that there were a bunch of California people on here too, since uh, Aaron and Michaela were from there. And also, again, I'm so sorry if you did not get your question answered from Aaron and Michaela, but do feel free to reach out to them. I have talked to them about it and um, we will have all their information linked. This YouTube video will be up on Monday. Please. Look at this. Yeah, so uh, short story, we were founded in 2017. I was looking to get my first rental property the year before and I was told I need to drive for dollars. I ended up missing out on some deals because I wrote them down, but I didn't send out my mail. I didn't follow up quickly enough. And I noticed one of these deals sold to somebody else and was under construction. So as a software developer, I made this really basic tool at the time. It's obviously gotten more advanced now, but it was just for me originally. And it was gonna let me pin the house I saw when it was distressed looking. It would look up the county record, bring it right in the deal machine, the, well, the thing on my phone, I didn't call it deal machine yet. And then it would also integrate with like a, a printer. So it'd print my mail for me when it was time. So that was the first version of deal machine. It was just for me. And so that's what you see here as, as the main, uh, the first offering we're going to talk about. There's two different plans you can choose. You can have one or the other or both. Um, but first we're gonna talk about driving for dollars. So the, the advantage is you get the lowest cost leads and the greatest ROI. So the most deals for the least amount of money. Uh, and that works if you're beginning or it works if you're as advanced as Aaron and Michaela because they're doing five deals per month, which is pretty good. So you're gonna get Deal Machine. You're gonna start a trial that driving for dollars plan if you don't have it already. Here's all the features for driving for dollars. Okay, you're gonna see a map. And if you have your mobile app, it's gonna look more like this. And it's gonna have a button at the bottom that says start driving. So 
if you click start driving, it'll um, actually start calculating your mileage and tracking where you've been. The green lines show where I've driven before. All these homes I have added if they have a green little house on here, but if they have a black dot, that means I have not added that house yet. So if I wanted to add a house, all I would have to do is click on one of those black dots. And now I immediately see, oh, this property is owner occupied. It's Harold Turner. And uh, he last bought it in 2011. So that's pretty good. If it looks distressed and he bought it in 2011, that's a while ago. So I'm definitely gonna add this lead to my list. And so now I've tagged a house, you know, I've added the house. <clears throat> What I would do next is add a picture. Um, by default, the Google one comes up on my account. So that is what I see. Now I'm gonna go back to the desktop screen just because it's easier for the demo. But on your phone, it would look pretty much the same. The, the, the mobile app does everything that the, uh, the desktop website does. Uh, I'm gonna add another lead there. Okay. How am I doing, Elise? You're doing great. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Caught you off guard. All right. So next thing I would probably do if I wanted to learn more about this owner is skip trace the owner. So let's skip trace the lead. Okay. So it looks like it was successful. And it looks like we had several phone numbers and five emails came back. So if you wanna see what the phone numbers are, they're right here under the phone tab. So um, one of these, uh, so this one's connected, this one's connected. Let's see, what was this person's name? Gian, okay. So yeah, I'd give all these calls. I'd, I'd start with the mobile one and I would go to the landlines after that. And then you've got some emails as well. And so we actually give you some additional information about the email addresses. We kind of prioritize them. We score them on like how likely it is to be her actual email. So um, I would probably try the, the first couple, especially since the second one says GN, if I was gonna send out a message. Um, and so the, the other thing that you can do while we're here is you can send out mail. So I'll tell you more about that later, but just real basically, you could press start mail campaign. And so I have a pretty complicated mail campaign, but you don't need to worry about that. Um, let's see, one step, two mailers. Perfect. So view campaign. Mailers are in the queue. Your mail is in the mailer queue and they should go out within the next hour. And so the first one is going to send a four by six postcard. It's going to go out June 25th. And the next one's going to go out July 12th. And there's even a little preview there. I can see what it looks like. So you can, you can want... set up several campaigns. But anyway, that's just the basics of how easy it is to send a mail campaign. Yeah, I wanted to say, I know uh, David's going to talk more about this, but with the skip tracing also, you say you get a return piece of mail. Don't throw it away. Our skip tracing also brings you multiple addresses that you can also try sending that mail to, to get in contact with that owner. Yes, it would show up right here if it did, but this one didn't. Right. So, okay. Now, uh, what do you guys think of that? Do you guys have any, any questions about that so far? You guys are really quiet tonight. Next thing I'm gonna show you is the property highlights. So on your mobile phone or on the desktop, if you wanna look for a certain type of property, you can highlight them on the map. Uh, so these are highlighted properties because that's I've got my filter set for absentee owner. And those are showing me that those are the absentee owned properties. Let's see here, the driving routes. Okay, you can show them on or off and they're color coded. So if I've driven them six to 12 months ago, they'd be yellow. And if they were 12 to 24 months old, they would be red. Okay. There's also a satellite mode, but I prefer the standard. Yellow. Yeah. 
So um, let's go to some other driving for dollars features and all of my driving routes. Well, I have some drivers, okay? So I can look at their routes through my portal. This was a very short route driven by Nathan. Uh, oh no, it's just, it's loading, okay. So, and, and it says uh, 3.6 miles, five leads. What that means is he can deduct, you know, the mileage on his tax return at the end. And I can make sure he's adding the right amount of leads per hour. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So then you've got that. And also if you have the elite plan, you can recruit drivers. So we provide you this landing page you can customize for your business. We've pre-done all the training so you can onboard and train your drivers uh, very easily. And if you're posting a job on Indeed to hire a driver from Huntsville, Alabama, this page would be really handy because instead of interviewing all these people and then fizzling out, the hoop that you want them to jump through is like, hey, sign up for my team on Deal Machine, go add 10 properties. Once you do that, then we'll talk, right? And so it's kind of a vague assignment, but you want to see like, are they tech savvy enough to like get into the app and can they add 20 properties in your neighborhood, right? You just that basic level of thing, nine out of 10 people won't do, but the one who does it, really good chance that guy's gonna be an excellent driver who's gonna be easy to work with. Um, all these videos are set up to teach him, um, you know, how he's gonna get paid, is it hourly per property, per closed deal, et cetera, what types of properties to look for. Uh, anyway, I, I don't wanna to get too far into this, but this is part of the elite driving for dollars package that you can get with Deal Machine to help you build that team. So in conclusion, Deal Machine provides driving for uh, dollar software to build your own unique list of properties. Uh, you get the mobile, mobile app, the mobile map, real-time routes. You can recruit and manage drivers. And the smart property filters, it's like the highlights that we talked about um, to help you identify which types of properties are in your area. Oh, thanks, Ray. You're, you're awesome. Ray's out there driving for dollars right now. So, so next, um, why don't we talk about the list builder? So driving for dollars and list builder, those are two ways you can generate leads. And so these are two different options you can have separately or together. And um, well, actually, let me pause there. Somebody just asked, can you drive for dollars virtually? Um, yeah, if you have the driving for dollars plan, you can drive for dollars virtually. Uh, with the uh, Deal Machine Chrome extension. So why don't I just demonstrate that real quick? That or is jump to the list builder. my bread and butter. Yeah? Yeah. So here's what you do. You go to Google Maps, you drop this little yellow man down here. Okay. And then let's say like, ooh, I want to add this teal colored house because I noticed that the paint is peeling. Um, you know, that, that's probably not the best example, but let's find a bad, bad. Oh, look at this house. Okay. So it's got weeds growing in the gutter. That that's like a sign that, that they're not taking care of this house. Okay. So then what I would do is I would find my, I think I just got a new computer. I need to download the extension. Virtual driving for dollars. I'll put that link for in the chat for anyone who wants to download it. Yeah. Thank you, Elise. I appreciate that. Turn on sync. Okay. Oh, shoot. All right. It looks like I got the extension now. There it is. So now, okay. Oh, I need to sign in. There we go. So I've got a bunch of pictures and I want to scroll till I see the one that I'm looking at. Um, let me. Well, actually, 940, I can also add it this way. 943. Well, it looks like Google Maps is doing something weird. Let's pin that one. It's that one, 940. Okay, so I have 940 selected. You have to be uh, on the ground to add it now. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me get on the ground. Hmm. 
If you don't see it, I sometimes Google just everyone knows Google's very touchy sometimes. So just like manipulate around the street a little and then it'll end up popping up eventually. It will. Sometimes it's just a little a little finicky. Well, anyway, once you click, once you see your property and you click it, then it's going to add it to your account. So not only did it add it to this extension, but if I go back to my deal machine account here, uh, I will see it. that there it is in my deal machine account. So that's how you would virtually drive for dollars. So glad that you asked, who was that? Oh yeah, and Julie asked, how often does Google update the photos? Obviously that's the downside, getting killed with the sunlight. Um, <laughs> that's the downside of, of virtual driving for dollars, but it's fine. They, in most major cities, they update every once a year, you know, so. If the and house is Julie, run down, it's been run down for a while. So it's, I think it's, it's, it's good enough if you have numbers, right? It's a numbers game. You just want to add numbers every week. And Julie, if you're really interested in seeing how far behind or forward they are with yours, you can go on Google and check. They actually have a website that you can check to see when your town is scheduled to be driven next for Google Photos. All right, list okay. builder. Yeah, list, list builder. It's another form of lead generation. How do you decide? Well, if you have more money, but you want results faster, the list builder is a great place to start. Some people use both. They want to have low cost leads for high ROI, and they also want to have really fast leads, but they're okay spending more money. That's the difference. That's how you choose. You just pick which one of those uh, or both that you want. So let's get into the list builder under lists in deal machine, you can click build lists. And then you can start with the zip code city or you can draw an area. I always find it very entertaining to draw. I'm a visual person. So let's see what kind of homes are around here. How many homes we got? Let's see all properties. Okay, I've got 61 properties in my box. And let's see if there's any vacant properties. Zero, let's see how many absentee owners, 14. So if I want absentee owners, um, let's even say that they have some equity. Okay, I don't want zero, but I'll do five. So I'll do five to a hundred, three of them, okay? so. I've really narrowed it down here. And now it is telling me and giving me this list of properties in this geography that is absentee owner with some equity. So uh, that is how the list builder works, but obviously there's like a lot more filters that you can choose. That was just one example. So we, we talked about drawing map lists, Pre-foreclosures, that's like one of the uh, types of data that you can uh, pull from there and filter by there as well. Um, but we didn't talk about smart lists yet, so let's, let's, let's talk about that. So regular lists, they, they become outdated the moment you pull them. So let's say somebody just bought an absentee-owned house that had 50% equity. Like if that happened tomorrow, the smart list would automatically add that to the list I just created in Deal Machine. So that's the advantage of the smart list. And if you're sending out mail, it would start mailing that person as well. So you can imagine how that could be helpful, especially if you pull like a pre foreclosure list that's changing all the time. So you'd want to turn on the smart list to keep those that campaign up to date. So that's how that works. All right. Pam, how did I do? Here's here's my list, by the way. There it is. So no matter if you, no matter how you're generating leads, you, you get to view them in this leads view. So no, no matter what, they're going to be here um, and you can like sort, search and filter your leads in this view. Man, I keep forgetting I'm muted. <laughs> okay. What, what were you saying? I was just saying that was good. The, the smart list is my, one of my favorite things about list builder. Thank you. So um, no, you might have noticed no matter if you're driving for dollars or if you're building lists, 
when you have a property added, you get all this real estate data, you get all the county records, their mortgage balances, if it's vacant or not, pre foreclosures, et cetera. Um, and so that's visible in this view, or if you pull the lead open yourself, uh, information is available over here on the right. Uh, Julie says, why is SmartList one of your favorite things about Deal Machine? And it's because I'm trying to work on my business, not in it. I don't want to have to manually pull that list every month to get the new pre foreclosures. I just want my system, I want to set up my campaign to send to those pre foreclosures. And as new pre foreclosures come in, I want it to automatically add those and start that campaign for those. So that's, that's one of my favorite lists, favorite features of Deal Machine. Okay, so we talked about this, you know, data comes with all the plans. Uh, the skip tracing option comes with all the plans. So there's, there's some unique things about skip tracing um, at Deal Machine, truly. And uh, let me show you. So let's go out of this list. Let's go view all of my leads. There we go. Clear all. Okay. So now these are all my properties loading. Let's go back to the small image. There you go. And I also want to view uh, properties that have been skip traced. Uh, I'm not sure if they've all been skip traced or not. Oh, clear all. Skip trace was done. Skip trace was successful. All right. So this is like a um, unique thing about Deal Machine. You can see all the phone numbers here, and it's visually bolding the ones that are really likely to be that person's phone number because you could tell from the county record the owner of this property is Marty Jones. And then you get the phone number, but also you get the C name, C N A M. I think it's C name, C NAM. It's basically the caller ID of that phone number. So we we pull from that database that's um, in addition to providing you the phone number, we pull from that database to see is this phone number registered under this person's name? And when it is, then it's bolded. So you can quickly see that. Another thing that's unique about the skip tracing a deal machine is. Uh, let's see, phone number tab. So you not only get the, the caller ID um, and you get the designation if they are mobile, we also will tell you if the number is connected. So we pay a lot of money every skip trace to run every number that comes back through a excellent database that will tell you if the number is connected or not. And so it helps you save a ton of time if you're cold calling or texting because you know which ones are going to be the best numbers to call first. So not a lot of, I, I haven't seen other um, skip tracing providers do this. This is something we recently added. Additional data on top of the skip tracing data for you guys. Um, so I wanted to make sure you guys both knew that. Okay. Let's see. So we talked about cell phones, connected status, caller ID, and then you get emails and addresses as well when they're available. And then last but not least. Yeah, buddy. We have a really great addition to our direct mail marketing that we're going to show you guys. So in the past, you've always had like a postcard. Actually, it started out with just one postcard. And then we added 10 postcard designs. You could change the text. You could change the colors. Now you can upload a brand new design that you're already sending with a mail house, you can put it in deal machine. So it's going to be exactly what you normally send, but in deal machine, or you can also totally customize. You can start from scratch and design something brand new in deal machine. It's like a little Photoshop inside deal machine that you guys can use to create these custom mailers. So at least you want to talk about the mailers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. As uh, we go, maybe somebody likes hearing from you more than me. No, stop. Um, I will say to you guys before we dive into this, it's a lot. I'm going to do it very high level, but highly recommend um, Pam will drop in the chat 
the training for our custom mailers. Um, and that gives you a live interaction with somebody to go over this um, when we get to the custom mailer part. But this is totally a facelift. If you used this in the past, or maybe you haven't even looked at this yet, campaigns looks different, obviously. Um, it's very sleek, it's very, um, you can see more of your analytics all in one spot. Um, and how a campaign goes. So um, David's right now in the mailers and we now have four by six, six by nine and 11 by six, I believe is the other one, um, as options for your mailers. And you see some of these right up top that David has are custom. They are brand new custom. Actually, these were done in our training by our trainer. Um, I'm pretty sure actually. <laughs> So, um, and we also still have the handwritten letters. So this is where you can click on one, you can flip it back and forth, see what it looks like. You can go in and edit. Um, if you have ever used Photoshop, um, this is very much like it where there's layers inside of it that you need to select and you can move to bring to the front. So, um, and you can go ahead and name these whatever you'd like, but it you can see that he labeled these of the way he wants them in and then there's like the banner text and if you click in it'll give you all the kit and caboodle and again i want to keep this high level because it's very much you could get in the weeds but you see that nice little candy cane stripe around the uh postcard that is your text barrier where it's like your bleed line of like where you don't want your text to be going into um so definitely have that on but again so much you can do in this um highly recommend joining the training it's just it's a lot but you can customize the mailer front and back with what you would like. So you get your own personal mailer. Excellent. Um, was there anything you wanted to add to that? No, I just like looking at all the designs. I know D Dakota's gotten very, uh, uh, he's come a long way. I've given some feedback on them. They look really good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so, um, if you don't mind, we'll go back to the campaigns tab really quick, just cause I want to go over, um, if you click on your campaigns, um, tab, if you click on one of your campaigns, you can actually see the performance. You can see the steps that are in it and your workflows. Um, so you really get to customize these a lot more than what you did before. Now, if you made a campaign with us and it was already sent out with mailers already, you will have to create a new one um, just because it's already been started. You can't edit it since it's already in there. So you can just clone it and make a new one. But here we see active leads in campaign, leads that completed campaign. And this will really help you with your KPIs too, to see what your um, ROI is with like how much you're spending on mailers for maybe one list in particular compared to another one. So lots you can do here and then the other thing I really love is our um, mailer queue. Workflows are really great too. Uh, but there's also videos on this, so no worries. But mailer queue is really great because say you're like, I want to see is anything stuck or is anything, any mailer issues. You can see all the things that are going on right here. You feel and you know and you have more control over what's happening. Because um, I know before I would say mailer queue and you were like, what mailer queue? Well, here it is. The mailer queue. That's right. No issues either. No issues. Love to see that. Um, yeah. So I know Ray was asking about uh, competitor app batch driven. Um, here's the deal, guys. Every year the deal machine's been in business, there's been a competitor that copied a lot of features and then sold it for the same price. And I, I think that batch driven is like the, the latest one of that. Here's what you guys need to know. If you're brand new, you may not have known that history that there's a lot of fly by night competitors that come out with a shiny new object, but here's how you can tell which apps are gonna be around. Cause I, I don't want you guys to use an app that may or may not be around and then you have to change all of your systems. So go to the app store and you need to search for the reviews. First, they need to have a lot of reviews and they need to have a high rating. So if you're on Google, um, you want to make sure and do that. We've got over 2,000 reviews, over 1,000 on Android and 4.8, and a four plus year history of updates. The other thing you want to look at, I'm not going to pull up any competitors, but I'm just saying you can on your own. Um, this is how I would judge. You got to look at the version history. So Deal Machine actually makes really significant updates every two weeks at a minimum. 
a lot of other apps out there, they're just fixing bugs once a month. So if you guys are looking for a system that you wanna use for the long term, those are two things I would suggest looking at when you're evaluating your options. I hope that helps. But it seemed like Ray liked the mailer system anyway. It is pretty bomb. Okay, so we so Brent, if you guys are um, have been using Deal Machine, one new thing is we just created a six by nine and a six by eleven postcard, and uh, those can be designed the same way the four by six can. And then the last thing is you can actually send a handwritten letter. We'll show you what that looks like. It's actually written by a robot with that holds a pen. So this thing is going to cost a little bit more. You'll see it's $1.47, but it's actually written with an ink pen. So if you really want to stand out and be personal, but you personally, you know, have a cramp in your hand, this is how you get that same effect. And so it is an option for you guys. And it, and it comes in an envelope with a pretty stamp, whereas a postcard is, uh, that would not have the stamp on it. So the, this costs a little bit more, nicer materials written with a pen. It should give you a better response rate. Okay, I think that's it. You know, we, we've got some settings, we've got some other things, but I really wanted to leave you guys with a clear uh, path on what to do next. And so basically you've got two options. You can pick one, the other, or both. There is a free trial for either one. Uh, and again, the difference is lower cost, higher ROI. And the one on the right is faster leads, but requires more marketing, uh, which would mean more money per deal. So. Uh, those are two options and either one you choose, it comes with real estate data, skip tracing and direct mail marketing. The benefit is these two things are together. So if your strategy is to use both of these things, what's amazing about Deal Machine is they're fully integrated. They're built on the same backbone. They're inside the same websites. So you don't have to have two logins, but also you're going to end up with more deals for uh, less money because it's going to eliminate errors they're both gonna use the same direct mail system. They're both gonna use that same mailer queue. So if you're driving for dollars and you're pulling leads from somewhere else, you probably, you might have the same properties on the same list. And then you'll have to enter them both in your CRM separately and um, Deal Machine eliminates those types of errors. So that the customer has great experience. You don't waste money on extra marketing. So uh, again, I hope that clarifies. It's a new demo format would love your feedback in the chat on a scale of one to 10, like how clear uh, are you feeling right now? Uh, 10 being like, you know exactly what to do. One meaning you're highly confused. Would, would love to hear what you guys are thinking. Wow, a 10, an eight, okay. That's good. Thank you guys. Would love to see any more. We okay, oh, four. That's four. good. So well, four is not good. Well, I mean, better I'm, than zero. I'm happy that you. I love that you guys are being very um giving us true feedback. That's what that we is, want. Yes, that is good. Um, Joaquin, if you have a specific question, um, please ask it. Another resource I wanted to provide for you is we do free live trainings that go deeper. Um. But also we have like a free live training daily that just tells you how to wholesale. And so I don't know uh, what part you're unclear on, feel free to type it in the chat, but um, Pam, if you would share that link, Joaquin, I think we could really help out with one of those live trainings that are focused on uh, the area that you need. So custom mailer, Training is there, driving for dollars 101, wholesaling 101, list builder 101. Uh, those are the four options. And we do run them daily. The time zone, I think, I think it'll switch the time zone based on where you're at. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm in I'm in Indiana. So it's showing me Indiana. But if you get to this page, it's going to show you your own time zone. Wow, Ray, that's great. Welcome to the Deal Machine family. Uh, didn't realize you were actually on the fence when you uh, joined live. So super uh, grateful. I'm glad that you uh, spent some time with us, Ray. Well, uh, let me let me close by this. Is I know we're about to end the webinar. That's sad for me. 
We are also going to be here to help even after this webinar. So inside the Deal Machine app or on the website, you could actually send us a message and we reply under five minutes. We've just expanded our hours. So it's like now like 9 a.m. to midnight Eastern time. So for you guys on the West Coast, we're there through the, uh, the beginning of the evening uh, to help you guys out. So um, we've got an excellent support team and uh, just wanted to be a resource for you guys after tonight. So thanks. You guys have any closing thoughts? Just want to say thank you again to everyone who was on here and so excited for those of you who are joining us for in our deal machine family but again like david said please feel free to reach out to us we are having a webinar next week um, as well but we are going to have a guest after that too um we will be having brent daniels coming so really Sounds exciting great. and um we love feedback so please do um there's going to be a survey coming out i'd love to hear what you guys thought of this webinar and um just thank you guys okay happy deal finding everyone and good night